third video on karma. Well, I think that with my video on the Jain view of karma, I, I've established that there are many different ideas as to what karma's fundamental nature is. What is karma? Um, with the illustration of the person accumulating memories and experiences and how they are affected by those um, experiences and memories, i.e. that canvas that I have in my previous video of the accumulation of experience and memory, the one where you're facing backwards in a forward moving car driving up a street. Um, <clears throat> it seems as though something akin to karma is inevitable, even if we discount the concept of karma completely. Experience alters us, whether we like it or not. Um, so, is karma desirable or undesirable? Almost all of the Eastern traditions say that karma is something that we either want to avoid completely, or we at least want to transcend. Because the obvious bad karma is, um, I don't know, I uh, spend 10 years um, in prison, or you know, I spend 10 years as a criminal or something like this in a way that complicates my life from here on in. I get a criminal record, um, I have memories of horrible things that I'd done or whatever. That might bother me for the rest of my life. That's kind of bad karma. When I think of something in my past that I wish wasn't there and I go, <clears throat> you know, um, part of my character now is to wince as I think of my past. That's, I would call that undesirable karma. The karma that acts as some, something of a mini panic attack or a punch in the gut when you think of something about your past that you really don't like. It could be some injustice that you believe that you've suffered or whatever. That's what I think colloquially gets called bad karma, but I would just call that negative karma. In other words, you wish something wasn't there that is there. Now there's good karma. Um, you know, the obvious ex uh, case of that is you have a fond memory of someone, you know, who is, who is no longer in your life, but you think, man, that person left a really pleasant mark on me. Or you had a great vacation that always stays with you. My original trip to India um, at the age of 23 has, it, it, it's created a, a, almost a mythology inside my own mind of my own life. That was a formative event in my life, my first trip to India, where I went everywhere in India. I went to Varanasi, I went to you know, then called Madras, I, all over the whole country. It took me a month and a half, but, you know, I visited a fair chunk of India. Um, <clears throat> so I, there is good karma, or positive karma. Two events can have the same effect. It can have the same nature. For example, I mentioned in my previous video that my mother died when I was 23. I have very positive memories of my mother, but I have very negative memories of the effect of having her wrenched from me at an early age. So the same event has positive and negative karma, or good and bad karma, or whatever you want to call it. It's fair to say that the positive karma is to be, is not as undesirable as the negative stuff. Um, but ultimately, you want it all behind you. Uh, you want to escape all of it, but it depends on your own personality depends on what you are like. I do not believe that I will ever slough off my entire karmic burden in my life. Um, no way. <laughs> Just not going to happen. I, I, don't, I don't live my life that way. Um, I'm not in a hurry to do so. I understand my limitations. Nietzsche's uh, become what you are. Geno oyo sasi. Um, become what you are, or even Gnothi say Auton, um, know thyself. Know your limitations. Know, as the Greeks would say, what you are not. <laughs> uh, that's how I read Gnothi say Auton, know thyself. It basically says, know that you are a man and not a god, or a woman, or a human. Um, so, I know that I'm going to continue to accumulate karma. I'm, I'm going to continue to be shaped by the decisions that I make now. I'm going to continue to be shaped by my past. I'm going to continue to be shaped by things that I think about. So therefore, since I, I know that I'm never going to completely slough off this skin of karma, at least in this lifetime, and I 
reincarnation is something that I never really seriously thought about, but I suppose it's possible. But in this lifetime, if I accept karma as a function of just being alive as a human, um, then I can say I'm not going to slough it off in this lifetime. Okay, now what? Well, I'm going to continue to accumulate karma. Let's accumulate the positive stuff. Again, it's not desirable to have any karma at all, but it's not realistic for me to think I'm ever going to slough it all off. So I'm going to try to keep the negative stuff out. I'm going to try to keep the extremely binding stuff out, the stuff that causes anxiety, depression, rage, this kind of thing. I'm going to try to avoid those, the negative passions. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to try to avoid all the stuff that's going to lead to more misery, more actual active negativity in my life. A sort of positive negativity in the, in, you know, sort of like physical pain is a positive sensation in that it is not neutral. It's something is actually happening. Something is acting on me in a way that I don't like. Most of the time I don't like pain. <laughs> um, so it's actually something that is happening. So that is negative. I don't want it to happen, but it is happening. The positive in, in the negative karma is that positive, is that negative karma happens. <laughs> it's hard to explain what I mean by positive negative karma, but I think you know what I'm referring to here. A positive act that has negative consequences. So how about positive acts that have less negative consequences? or at least in terms of where I expect to be by the end of my life, positive consequences. Say I'm, say 100 is having no karma at all, zero is being completely encased in a near unsupportable burden of karma. Say I'm now at 40 and I get to 50 by the end of my life. I've gotten half of my karma off, whatever, or half of my the negativity of the experiences of my life. I get over things. I get closure, I guess, in the latest feel-good parlance of our society. I put the bad things in the past behind me in a proper place where they no longer have that effect on me when I think about them. That's dealing with negative karma. And positive karma would be simply something like calming myself down, meditating, thinking about what I am, what my place is in the cosmos, what I'm supposed to do here in my life, what it means to be human, I, you know, even understanding my own limitations. There are people who seem to hold the view that if you accept the fact that we are humans and we are imperfect and that we are what we are, you are somehow complicit in the negative unless you are thoroughly opposed to absolutely everything that is negative in this universe, you are complicit with it. That's insane. That's the slippery slope, if you ask me. We are what we are, and moving a little bit towards the positive, and out of the negative, or moving towards having no karmic burden at all, um, or no burden from past experiences that are negative or even positive, moving towards that state is, to my, is, is, in my view of things, riding the tiger. Accept the fact that as a limited human being, there's only, certain, there's only so much you can do in, in, a, in a lifespan. Again, the, you, this kind of thinking creeps into your head at about my age, about 50 where you start thinking, wow, I'm going to die an imperfect person, whereas when I was 20, I assumed I was eventually going to perfect myself. Yeah, I did actually believe that. Again, that's Catholic education for you. No, don't worry. If you try hard enough, you can perfect yourself. Uh, if you don't, you're a horrible uh, person. But, you know, <laughs> that's, you know. So, yes, I uh, now you sort of, you know, it's kind of a stereotype at my age. You sort of come to terms with yourself. You start to accept your imperfections and things like that. And you no longer have this fear that if you start to accept your own imperfections, it's just a slippery slope and you're just complicit in evil. So putting yourself in a proper position to deal with your own karmic burden, your own burden of experience, your own burden of everything that has ever happened to you, anything you've ever done, um, First, understanding your own position in that, in that dynamic is utterly important. You have to know what you are. 
You have to know where you are. You have to know what your limitations are. This is bloody hard stuff, finding out where your limits are. Um, although they do say that's what youth is for, <laughs> finding out where your limits are. Um, <clears throat> and once you've done that, you try to move towards the more positive. That, I think, is a little bit more of a Western view of karma, although the Western view of karma is kind of can get pretty crazy and mumbo-jumbo-ish, i.e. the golden rule, or even some force out there that will reward you if you're good and punish you if you're bad. That's rubbish, if you ask me. Um, but moving away from the bad experiences or the undesirable experiences, I guess, of action towards the more desirable or less undesirable is a nice, modest goal for us human beings who want to, uh, you know, have sex in life. We want to in engage ourselves in the world. We want to do all kinds of things that ultimately are kind of going to create more experience. And, well, ultimately, experience in itself has to be transcended. But it doesn't mean that you have to hate yourself for actually being a karma-generating thing. Um as part of your fundamental nature. Karma is vast beyond imagining. Um, one could say karma is the universe in and of itself. Um, it's all the results of actions, memories, thoughts, plans, everything. Everything that flows from that is karma. There's less desirable, more desirable, or less undesirable, and then there's the ultimate goal is no karma at all. Um, riding the tiger? I think that that's possible, and I think in many cases, when you understand how vast the cosmos is and how small you yourself are, it's pretty much the sanest way to live one's life. I would say that in many ways the Buddha's middle way is probably... Um, riding the tiger. Or I would even say um, the other maxim of Apollo at Delphi, Midin Agan, nothing in excess. Excess is essentially negative karma.